human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. This took place on July 26th during a session of the U.S. Congress, specifically in a subcommittee on national border security and foreign affairs of the House Oversight Committee. During this session, they heard the sworn testimony of three people. They shared their observations and opinions, which may seem surprising, so let's delve into what they said and its implications. This isn't the first time this subject has been discussed. In 2017, the New York Times published interesting videos of UFOs taken by pilots, supposedly featuring very advanced technology beyond our reach. In 2020, amidst the pandemic, similar news resurfaced. However, the situation in 2023 is different. It's not about hard to explain videos or rumors, but strong, direct, and compromising statements made under oath in Congress. So what was said? They reported witnessing UFOs with very advanced technology, far superior to human capabilities, and even defying the laws of physics, such as movement without propulsion, that a human couldn't withstand due to the G-forces. They claimed that the government possesses this alien technology and is concealing this information by misappropriation of funds. They allege that for more than 30 years, the government has been aware of extraterrestrial life and has taken repressive measures to avoid disclosing these facts, even resorting to physical violence. They stated that these events pose a potential risk to humanity, that these beings are interested in nuclear technology, and they have feared for their lives for making these statements public. These are serious accusations made under oath, not only about information concealment and embezzlement, but especially about the repressive and coercive mechanisms used to keep this information hidden. It's like something out of a movie, yet very impactful given its implications. After hearing them, several questions arise. Does all this make any sense and what is my opinion on it? It does and it doesn't, depending on how you look at it. This is a highly relevant and serious scientific topic. Famous scientists like Nikola Tesla proposed communication with Martians, and Frank Drake were some of the early promoters of the UFO phenomenon. In 1959, Giuseppe Cocconi and Philip Morrison published an interesting article in Nature about searching for interstellar communications. Later, in 1960, Frank Drake initiated Project Ozma to capture extraterrestrial communication signals. In 1971, SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, was founded with NASA funding, and in 1980, Carl Sagan founded the Planetary Society to coordinate this search effort. There have been at least a couple of suspicious cases, such as the unexplained WOW signal received on August 15, 1977, by the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. The signal came from the Sagittarius constellation and still hasn't been explained. Some scientists, notably Michio Kaku and Avi Loeb, have shared their thoughts on this matter. Loeb, a very relevant scientist, proposed the hypothesis of an asteroid named Oumuamua visiting our solar system from outside and suggested it could be alien technology. However, this was inconclusive and far from definitive and received rejection from the scientific community. Searching for extraterrestrial life is a serious scientific endeavor occupying many brilliant minds, a significant national budget, and dedicating hundreds of researchers to the subject. There's even an entire scientific area called astrobiology dedicated to this purpose. Statistically, it seems highly probable that there should be extraterrestrial life. There are 100 billion galaxies in the visible universe, each with hundreds of billions of stars, and we know that it's not uncommon for stars to have planets around them. If you multiply the number of galaxies by the number of stars and by the number of planets, it doesn't seem unlikely that one of these planets could have conditions similar to Earth's for life to exist. However, the problem lies in the enormous distances involved in space travel. Even if we agree that there probably is extraterrestrial life out there, possibly intelligent and technologically more advanced than us, the distances to travel to reach us are enormous by human standards. The nearest star to us after the Sun is Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away. That means light, the fastest thing we know, takes four years to travel from there to here. Critics of the UFO phenomenon use this fact as their strongest objection. While within our known physics, there are hopes that someday these immense distances may finally be within our technological reach through technologies such as warp drives, wormholes, extra dimensions, or changing physical constants to increase the maximum speed in the universe. These are just examples within known physics. 200 years ago, it was said to be impossible to fly or have something like the internet, and look how we fly and use the internet now. So while these distances seem impossible to travel now, 
It would be humble to acknowledge that our understanding and capabilities might drastically change in the future. A scientist accepts that there could indeed be intelligent life outside of Earth, although it's harder for me to accept that it would be capable of traversing such vast distances. This would require recourse to exotic physics, thousands of years beyond our current capabilities. In the video, I also refer to one of these frontiers of physics, the holographic principle, drawing from both relativity and quantum mechanics. This in particular fascinated me, I must admit. So what do I mean by this? The principle of graphics emerges when studying the thermodynamics of a black hole. Yes, a black hole has thermodynamics. It's pretty crazy. It has temperature and entropy. This is an important discovery, one of the most significant of our era, and it's thanks to our beloved Stephen Hawking. With it, he resolved one of the great paradoxes of black holes, the paradox of information conservation. According to quantum mechanics, information must be preserved in every physical process. You might think, well, if I throw a book into the fire and burn it, I'm destroying information, right? I'm not violating this principle. From a practical perspective, yes, you're destroying the book's information. However, from a theoretical perspective, and this is the crucial part, you could, in theory, reverse the combustion process and recover all the information from the book. There's no physical process in this case that is destroying this information. But if I throw the book into a black hole instead of a fire, things change. The black hole swallows the book and all its information, and there's no way to retrieve it. The information is lost. This is the paradox of information. The question arises, how does the black hole store this information if it's an empty space with nothing in it? The answer lies in its surface. And here, the holographic principle emerges, how a three-dimensional world like ours collects its information on a two-dimensional surface. How this holography is used to travel through space and cover cosmic distances is something only this gentleman and these aliens know. We only know of one type of life in the universe, our own. Do other types of life exist? Will they be like ours? How will our life, which is based on organic carbon-based chemistry and subject to the process of evolution on our planet, change? DNA is the genetic hereditary material, and water is the essential element for life. Here, several questions arise. Will other forms of life follow this path? The carbon path, the water path, the DNA evolution path. But let me guide you here and rely on this book I have by my dear Carlos Briones. Are we alone? It's a wonderful book that I highly recommend. As much as we look at the periodic table, there seems to be no substitute for carbon as the fundamental element for life. Carbon has the unique feature of easily hooking up with other atoms, especially other carbons, and thus creating long chains, large molecules that can encode information and perform very complex functions like amino acids, proteins, or even DNA. When it comes to DNA as the hereditary molecule, we could imagine alternatives. This is truly interesting in case we find other types of life. What would be the form of genetic inheritance? Moreover, the evolution mechanism also seems fundamental for the existence of complex beings. Thus, scientifically, we would expect beings based on carbon, with water as a fundamental element and some type of base molecule to transmit information. As for the appearance of these intelligent beings, I refer to another work, in this case, The Future of Humanity. In it, I find artistic appearances that are fundamental for a civilization to give rise to technology. First, there are stereoscopic frontal eyes, similar to those of hunting animals, which tend to be more intelligent than prey. Secondly, a prehensile thumb is vital for using instruments. Lastly, language is a third fundamental characteristic that an extraterrestrial being visiting us would likely possess. Then. Depending on the characteristics of the planet where they evolved, their physiology would differ, depending on gravity or whether it's an oceanic planet, like some moons of Jupiter. In this case, their properties would change, for example, the shape and number of limbs on their bodies. So we have a partial answer to the question, does what these people are saying make sense? Partially yes, because it makes sense that there is intelligent life in the universe. But there's also a vast technological chasm that a civilization would have to overcome. Following the principle of humility, and considering that an extraterrestrial civilization could be thousands or even millions of years ahead of us, we must keep an open mind and not make categorical statements.